Okay, so now if you think about this, uh, let's say this is your ground truth bonding box, which is mapped on top of the original image. And let's say your feature map is of size three, four, five cross five, something like this. And if you scale your ground root bonding box, it might it might lie, uh, lie something like this, right? So it, it won't fit perfectly because this is kind of a discrete uh, feature map, right? So your original image might be 600 cross 600 pixels, but your feature map might be, let's say 50 cross 50 or 60 cross 60. So there is some downsampling happening when you are using the feature encoder. So same downsampling will also be done on the bonding box, which is coming from the ground truth. But when you will try to overlay on, on top of these feature maps, it won't perfectly align here. And that's what we saw last time. Then we'll have to adjust this bonding box uh, to this discrete activation uh, feature activation map. And so if you look at this, so this point, the closest point is this corner, right? So this will go here like this. And again, if you look at this one, the closest point seems like this. So it will go there. And again, same will be done for this and this corner. So basically, you will adjust this and it will be mapped to this location, the, the one on the background. Right. So in a way, this is like quantization. And if you again try to map this bonding box on the original image, then what's happening? All these pixels from the original image are actually getting added to this proposal, which is not the right way because this is like additional information which was not actually present in the ground truth. Okay, so that's like additional information. And this region over here is actually something, the information which we are losing because this is actually part of your bonding box, your ground truth bonding box. But then because of this quantization, we have to shift the bonding box. So we are actually kind of losing this piece of information. Okay, now let's see how we can uh, fix that using ROI align. And this is again one example which we also saw when we were talking about faster RCNN. And this is actually giving you a clearer picture like what kind of information you're losing and what kind of information you are gaining. So if this is your original image and you extract like a feature map of 16 cross 16. So there will be like a lot of downsampling here. And this is your ground truth bonding box, which is the red bonding box here. So again, you will have to perform that quantization so if you do the adjustments, then the green is like something which you are adding and blue is something which you are losing. And if you cut, if you look back into the image, the green region is like this green grass over here, okay, which lies outside the bonding box. And this blue region is maybe the, the bottom row here, some of these rows of pixels and some part over here. Maybe the ear might be gone or the spa might be gone. Okay, so we are losing something. Now, for detection, that's that's fine because we are doing some kind of adjustments at the end, right? We we adjust like how much is the bonding box misaligned with the original ground truth box, and that's exactly what we train on. And the network might be able to adjust that, but if you think about if you have to do the fine segmentation of this object, it will be tricky because then we are losing like losing like all this information. We don't have that then you will not be able to actually find this boundary at all. Okay, bonding box still will be able to adjust, but boundary it's completely lost. And that's why it's actually more important to do this fine grained adjustment without losing any information for segmentation as compared to object detection. So now let's see how we can fix the, uh, this issue. And instead of ROI pooling, we have uh, ROI align. Okay, so this was ROI pooling. Again, one sample example, which we have gone through uh, in one of the previous lectures as well, when we were talking about object detection. And all these pixels were actually, we were losing. And this is something which will happen when you do ROI pooling. Now in ROI Align, what we do is we try to actually do some kind of interpolation. And again, if you, rem if you remember like from last lecture, where we were talking about uh, bilinear interpolation, right? which was actually trying to, so what was the context? Uh, yeah, so bilinear interpolation, if you remember, we used for upsampling, right? When you have to add like additional pixels, you, you have to go from two cross two to four cross four. So what those additional values will be, and we were using interpolation for that. So exactly 
same formulation. And again, that formulation we have seen in HOG uh, histogram of gradients as well. So we'll try to do, we'll try to utilize the same concept here as well. And we'll try to avoid like a loss of information and adding any extra information in this case. The idea is instead of completely discretizing or quantizing these coordinates to align the bonding box with the feature map we, we have, we, we try to perform interpolation on those values. All right, so let's say if this is your bonding box and you can see that it's not completely aligning with your feature map. Okay, so if we have to get from this to two cross two, what we do is we just draw these grids. In this case, it's two cross two. And again, it provides you flexibility. You can do like two cross two, three cross three, four cross four, whatever you want. Okay, so that's like one flexibility. And later we'll understand like why that's important. So in this case, we are doing two cross two. So we will just divide this feature map into two cross two. We don't care whether this is aligning well with the feature map or not. Okay, so that will give you two cross two. Now, the idea is to get the values for this particular cell because we need one value for this cell, right? What we will do, what we, uh, what we will do is we will see like what are like all the values to which it's actually overlapping and we will utilize all those feature vectors. Okay. So for example, if you have to do here uh, for this value, so it's trying to get like four different values. And again, these are equidistantly placed in this cell. If you look carefully, okay, you create like, uh, again, a grid on this. And these are like some four equidistant uh, points on this cell. And then what we do is we try to find out like how far this point is from all these four coordinates. Okay, and using those distances, we try to estimate value for this. So it's not just copying over like value from one activation map to get the output, but we see like what, what are the other pixel values or what are the other activation values in the proximity. And depending upon like its position, its distance from all those values, we just use that bilinear interpolation uh, uh, that, that equation to find that value and just use that. So it will be some kind of weighted sum of all those values. 